Which of the two women are you going to be? The one that is going to pursue your dreams or the one who's going to be in the side ways, just watching those women who are brave enough, courageous enough to take next steps, even with that fear of the unknown. And if you are part of the 50% of the women who will take actions, here are my top three recommendations for you to get started with your business. Welcome back to another episode of Unexpectedly Successful with you, Dr. Griselda, your host for this show and also business coach for aspiring women entrepreneurs. And let's get started with today's episode. Do you love yourself? Let me repeat that question. Do you love yourself? Have you ever asked that question to yourself? Do I love myself? And for me, I had never asked this question until about three months ago when I was preparing for a speech. And the answer was, of course, I love myself. That was a no doubt. But let me get to the deep insights of what came after I asked this question to myself. In my concept of love, I tend to incorporate what I call tough love. And when I say tough love is because I was justifying what I'm going to tell you next under that label. So when I said tough love, I incorporated something that I think is going to resemble to many of your stories. How many of you have told yourself that you are your worst critic? If you have said that, please wave at me. And there is something very crucial to this statement because when we say we are our own worst critic, we are literally saying that. So no matter how bad the criticism from the outside world, we're still the worst one at doing that. And there is an issue intrinsic to that, but let me keep going with the story. I used to say that all the time about myself. I've demanded greatly and I had been my worst critic for a very long time under the justification of success, primarily with my professional life. How many of you are connecting to this story so far? Wave at me if this is connecting with you. Okay, but what does success really mean? And if you haven't heard my episode about redefining success, please check it out because it has very cool pieces of insights that will help you define your own success. So according to a definition, success means to achieve something that I want. So based on that, yes, I was successful. I had set myself to be the best professional woman out there because guess what? I was my own worst critic. So the standard I had set for myself was very high and it didn't matter what I needed to do as long as I accomplished that goal. So let's go back to my life in 2021, a few years from this moment here. I had a job that many envied. When I say many, literally, that was the case. I had the title, I had the salary, and I was a big shot in town. So all of my work had resulted in me being in that position. So I was successful because I had set myself to reach that goal. So when I say defining your own success, for me, I had set the goal to be the best professional and reach the highest opportunities possible. But when success for me got to that point, then started morphing into one, lack of satisfaction, two, lack of fulfillment, and three, a great need for purpose. I know these are very deep insights into where I was. So can you imagine where I was while being a big shot in town as a professional and then I got home and I was 
with a lack of fulfillment, with lack of satisfaction, and a great need of purpose. Why was I here to begin with? Why did I come to this position to begin with? And that place that I am describing that may connect with some of you is what led to next steps. Okay, so before I move forward, I want to give you some context to my personal story that may give you some insights to who I am as a person. I was born and raised in Mexico, and I lived there as an adult up until I was in my early 20s when I decided to move to the U.S. to go to school. But going back to my family story, my mom was a wonderful, wise woman who was a teacher, not only in her work, but also at home. So I had great teaching lessons from a very early age with my mother and through her wisdom and insights. Our home was a learning environment that made possible for us to grow on an everyday basis, even when we were not fully aware. My dad, a wonderful, curious and adventurous man who from a very, very early age, he told me, I want you to expand your horizons. I want you to see the world and I want you to experience the world. So no wonder why I have explored the world because I was encouraged from early age. So parenthesis here for the parents listening here, what are you telling your children? Are you encouraging them to explore the world or are you passing on your own fears to limit their futures? So close of the parenthesis here. My dad was always looking for opportunities. And at some point in his early career, when he was in a position that a lot of people wanted to be in and he was having the salary that a lot of people desired, he decided to make a pivotal movement and a decision that would be so consequential to the rest of the family history. Guess what he decided to do? He decided to leave his full-time job and continue to expand his side hustle. So why do I say side hustle? Because my dad, with a full-time job, he had started doing things on the side because he saw opportunities and people saw him as someone curious and they would come to him with ideas and with opportunities. And so it was a matching between him being curious and people knowing that he was curious and he explored unusual opportunities. And so there was a match of an opportunity with what my dad started as a side hustle. So fast forward. He did not have access to business mentors or know-hows, neither my mother, because both of them were first generation in everything that they did among their siblings, among their parents. And so it was not like, I'm going to be a business owner because my entire family is business owners. And so this was a very scary moment. However, because of the administration of my mother, the foundation was there for my dad to continue moving forward in his full-time business ownership journey. Okay, I don't think my mother and father really fully understood what they were doing for the entire family because that moment they were changing the entire story of our families and the generations to come. Now I can tell you that I come from a family of of entrepreneurs. And I said this with great pride because every single person in my family is a self-made entrepreneur. Every story in my family is someone who took the challenge for entrepreneurship and explored it and has continued to maintain that journey even with the challenges coming their way. Okay, so let's go back to my story of 2021 where I was a successful professional, okay? The longer I stayed being a big shot in town, 
with my employment, with my title, and with my salary, the further I felt from my purpose. And as the lack of satisfaction increased, the frustration followed. In a very counterintuitive way, as the fire within me dimmed down to places that I had never seen before, my desperation for purpose intensified. It was like oxygen was running out of me and I just needed to reach a place where I could breathe again. So one day, after crafting my exit plan, having said a resignation day, having crafted the resignation letter, and having started to talk to my network of what opportunities were out there after I finished with my employment, I took the plunge and I launched my own business. So I want to pause right here because for many of us, this moment of starting our own business, you have played that moment over and over in your imagination because you know there is a business within you. And for many of us, this moment of realizing this dream just keeps postponing in time because other priorities come to our life, because life is not perfect, because challenges come to us, because our children need us, or because some other things come and take priority. But let me tell you, if you know you have a business within you, you know that that dream will never go away. So please stay tuned for the steps that I'm asking you and encouraging you and inviting you for you to take your next steps, even when it's a plan for months to come. But having a plan is so crucial for you to actually take that very exciting and scary decision to launch your own business. So anyway, back to me deciding to launch my own business and leaving my full-time employment. Do I have permission to share with you the top three items of what my business has meant to me? If I have permission, let me start. Number one, my business has become one of my primary instruments to discover and deploy my purpose. Remember I said before that I was so desperate to find my life purpose. And even if I had done pieces of it, there was a moment in which I just didn't want pieces. I wanted it all. And I saw that moment being the opportunity for me to just go for it. Number two, my ability and freedom to create has amazed me. It's just like my mind comes up with ideas. And the wonderful thing is that ideas have come to your mind as well. The difference is whether or not we deploy those ideas into testing them, into validating them in the world, or we have these ideas and let them go away because we are not taking next steps. But you know, each of us has the same ability within us to create as the one that I've been mesmerized about myself. And if you don't believe me, just go back in your history and see what you've created out of nothing. And I can assure you that you have come with examples of your creative power. Anyway, for me, I started as a consultant. It was a, an easy transition of what I was doing into what I could start doing to generate revenue. I already had the network, I already had the knowledge, and I already have the insights of what to do from the other side of the coin that I could leverage upon for me to deploy my consulting firm. So I started with no website. I started with no email. I started with my personal email, contacting my personal and professional network. Hey, I'm consulting. Is there anything that I can do for you? And just like that, I started my business. Then I started with the idea to have a podcast. I wanted to reach the masses with a message of hope, of know-how, of role models, 
and showing people the things that I did not have access to because of my limited surroundings of role models in the entrepreneurial world. So if you haven't seen any of these stories, I invite you to see the wonderful stories of successful business women that I have had the chance to interview in the past. So that's how Unexpectedly Successful came about because I wanted to reach the masses with messages of hope, of know-how, of inspiration, and for women to see women just like them doing amazing things because if they can do it, you can do it too. So that was also an amazing thing for me to be able to get to see through the launch of my business. And then last year in this long list of items that I had on my bucket list, I had, I wanted to write my own book. And guess what? December of last year, I became a published author in collaboration with another 10 beautiful authors of the book, The Transformational Power of a Name. Had I thought that I was going to be a published author when I started my own business in 2021? And the solid answer to that question was no. So can you imagine if you start your own business, what are the things that you cannot even think about as possibilities, as options, as opportunities that will come your way once you align your brain with the goals that you want to achieve. So that was super exciting for me. And then what is to come? Business coaching for aspiring women entrepreneurs, more of that and many other amazing things that I will keep you posted. But this is just three years in the making. So I am excited for the next three, excited for the next six about this journey. And then the number three thing that my business has represented for me as a business owner in my pursuit of purpose is that definition of success has evolved from that one of being my own worst critic to being my first great cheerleader. And I can tell you now part of my day to day routine is to not say, I did this wrong. I should have done this differently, but in the opposite, I am worth of doing anything. I was built to do this. I was born for a time like this. I am enough. And actually I am more than enough because I was divinely created for what I am currently deploying. So my own worst critic, I have had put it on the back burner and say, thank you for the service that you helped me to get here. You no longer serve me for where I need to go. And so if you have said, I am my worst critic, please stop it and replace those criticisms with affirmations of who you are. You are more than enough. You are worth it. You have experiences, knowledge, and information that make you the best qualified person for that dream you have in your heart. So anyway, that is number three. My definition of success changed from being the best professional woman to allowing myself to have moments of reflection, to allow myself to heal the things that I needed to heal as an adult and that I just had not made space for those moments for me to transform into this beautiful masterpiece that will continue to grow. But without the space for transformation, we will marginally grow, but we will not be able to take quantum leaps because quantum leaps are for those people who are fully intentional about their destination. So the last piece is that legacy became part of what I needed to search. And legacy can mean a lot of things for a lot of you. But legacy for me is like, what am I leaving for the generations to come? Not only in the monetary, but in the spiritual, in the emotional. Like, who am I as an older person showing an example to my nieces and nephews and the people around watching me? Who am I showing them that I am? 
And that ties back to, am I my own worst critic? And am I showing the example that that's what it takes to be successful? And so it was a shifting of who I was and what success meant to me. So that is my story. But let's look at the facts. Research shows that at three out of four women who own their own business are happier than before. They want to build wealth and they have a desire to make a difference. So I did not know at that moment that I was part of those amazing statistics. And you can also be part of those numbers of those amazing women who are happier than before through your business ownership, that you are building wealth and that you want to make a difference. So that is powerful. The flip side of the story is that 50% of women will not act upon their dreams because of fear. So one out of two women will never take their next step because of fear, because of the unknown, because of the barriers and limiting beliefs that we have been set to. So that is a sad story for me. Because if I had not taken that leap of faith, I would not be where I am with an enhanced level of satisfaction and a sense of purpose that I am here right now, being able to talk to you and inspire you to take those actions. I want you to experience those moments of empowerment. I want you to enjoy that sense of purpose because it is transformational. It is like nothing else that I had experienced in my career. And I understand owning your own business is a matter of calling. It is not an easy thing, but if you are ready, I want you to take action. I want you to not just contemplate the possibility, but you actually having an action plan for your next steps. And if you are ready I want to share something very important for you right this moment. Which of the two women are you going to be? The one that is going to pursue your dreams or the one who's going to be in the sideways, just watching those women who are brave enough, courageous enough to take next steps, even with that fear of the unknown. And if you are part of the 50% of the women who will take actions, here are my top three recommendations for you to get started with your business. Number one, get into a community. As a business owner, the road is hard and it can be even harder if you are alone. Very unlikely is that you will be able to raise above the misbeliefs and the lack of knowledge if you are not surrounded by like-minded people who already did what you want to do, who already have experience that they can share with you to help you build you up and not bring you back down with misbeliefs or doubts about why this wouldn't work. So get into a community as soon as possible. Number two, create a plan. And when I say create a plan, I'm not saying a full business plan with 50 pages of what to do, but a plan of what you need to do in the next month, in the next three months, in the next six months. And guess what? Sometimes it is hard getting to places with a plan, right? When I have made a plan for my day or for my week, it is hard for me to stay on track hundred percent of the time. But if I don't have a plan, I for sure will not get to that place because I don't know where I am going. It is like us getting in the car and just going around the park in circles when we don't have a plan. And I wonder how many times we get in the car and we start driving without a clear destination. And we may have done this just for the joy of riding, But if you want to get somewhere, you know, in your mind, how you're going to get there. So why would we not do the same for us to launch our businesses? 
So create a plan, create the steps that you need to take for the next month, three months, six months. And if you don't have clear understanding, take that one next step. And from that more ideas and more next steps will come. I know that clarity comes from action. So please take your next step. And number three, take your next step to get you closer to where you want to be in a way that is intentional, in a way that you know that you are doing something to commit yourself to achieving that dream. Whatever it is, take your next step. If you haven't heard my episode about how to find money to launch your own business, please look it up because it's filled with gems of very simple things that you can start doing right now to not prevent you from launching your business if financial items are a reason why you're not moving forward. And these actions can be make a budget, find a community, find a mentor, but please take action. Maybe you are waiting for the perfect moment. Is that you? Are you waiting for the perfect moment? I am so sorry to tell you and burst your bubble, but there is no perfect moment unless you created right this moment. If you are ready to take next steps, please continue to follow me because I have amazing opportunities coming up where I am fully committing to helping you get to your next level as a businesswoman. So more to come, your business coach, Dr. Griselda.